Welcome to Summer Awesome Games, I'm Rob. Today we're going to be doing a little movie review on Pixar's new movie, Inside Out. Directed by my favourite Pixar director, yes, I have a favourite Pixar director, Pete Doctor, who directed uh, Up and Monsters, Inc. Two of my favourite Pixar movies. But Inside Out is probably their smartest and most just insane idea of film. Like, just thinking about like how they come up with a story for this idea, it made no sense to me. But it works so well. Essentially, it's dumb... I'm gonna dumb it down as best I can, even still you might not understand what's going on. So I've added clips in the description so you can see. But essentially, your emotions are little people inside your head that have a control panel and during certain situations in your life, uh, each one will take the controls and they will create a memory for you. These little orbs that will appear and uh, come down this little chute and roll away and there will be a certain color depending on what emotion was uh, on the controls. Sounds crazy, I know. But there is joy, sadness, fear, anger, and disgust. These are little people, like literal little people inside your head. So these are our, our main characters. Besides Riley, the little girl whose head they live within. We see her from infancy to about the age of 11, uh, where during her childhood, she's very happy. Joy is always on the controls, keeping her life as happy as she can. And uh, all these little memories come in. They're all bright yellow because they're created by joy. Uh, but every now and then, you know, disgust will kick in, and if she has to eat broccoli, disgust will take controls. And then a green little memory orb will appear, or fear will kick in, a little purple memory orb, or anger, a red one. But they always tried their best to make sure sadness never did anything. So sadness was like, she was kind of the outcast of these emotions, and Joy never wanted to do anything. Sadness was the complete opposite, she was a downer. So Joy was always like, you stay over here, stay away, don't touch anything. Uh, but then Riley has to move school, and uh, her family moves away to San Francisco, and her first day of school is terrible. And sadness just starts taking the controls and ruining everything. Joy just starts going crazy, I like, stop touching stuff, stay away. You're ruining Riley's life. And they get into a bit of a scuffle, and they get sucked up this big memory tube thing that goes to long-term memory. And there they uh, have to make their way back to headquarters to help Riley because now anger, fear and disgust are the only ones who can control Riley. They're the only emotions that Riley has while she's at basically all on her own in this new place. Like her family's busy, uh, her dad's working hard trying to adjust this new place, her mum's looking for the packing truck and stuff. It's all going downhill for Riley and these emotions are not helping so they have to travel through her brain, through all these crazy inventive places. Uh, to get back to headquarters, and it's so good, it's so clever, it's so creative, this movie. I enjoyed it a lot, it was very good. Uh, the only negative I can say is that Joy and Sadness attempts to get back to headquarters fail a lot. Uh, by like, the fifth time it fails, I don't know if it goes to five, but it goes, it's, it feels like five times, like they fail, just keep failing in their plans. They do fail a lot, and it's kind of like, oh, they failed again. But at the same time, there's all these creative zones of the mind that, that you're just like, no, I'm cool with you failing, because I want to see this area that you mentioned. I want you to go there and show me your interpretation of this part of the brain or mind or whatever it is that you want to show. Because it's so clever, it's so colourful, it's great film, very funny, uh, probably one of the funniest films, but it's very adult orientated. Like, I don't know how kids would like this one. Yes, it's colourful, the characters are silly. But story-wise, it feels like it might be kind of boring for them because all the jokes are very like, they're focused for more adult because like, it'll be like a jingle that gets stuck in your head and they explain why that happens and you're kind of like, oh yeah, that's pretty funny. Kids might not, like, they would probably wouldn't care. They're just like, ah oh, ha ha, silly thing happening. Uh, but I enjoyed this movie a lot. They also had a short film before it called Lava. And I gotta say, the entire audience bawled their eyes out of this film. <laughs> So if you're seeing Inside Out the cinema and seeing this short film before it, take some tissues. Take a lot of tissues because it is fantastic. It's about this little volcano out the sea all alone. It's a musical. It's excellent. It's, probably, it's definitely their best short film they've made. Inside Out is up there. It's one of their higher Pixar films. It's one of their most creative films they've ever made. Uh, I wouldn't say it was their best, but I would give it a very high score. At least a 9 out of 10. Uh, Pixar movies are coming back, man. They've had a bit of a downer, like of late with Brave and Monster University was alright. Uh, but this one, stepping it up. We're getting to see that quality Pixar creativity kicking in again. Let's try out Baymax. Let's fight some dudes as well. 
so here's his combo. So this final kick here is the extended one. There is ground pound, extended range there. Basic, pretty basic ground pound. Uh, then we've got his uppercut holding down Y. 